to Santa Barbara, California. This Golden Princess is safely secured at her anchorage and we have received clearance from the local authorities for guests to proceed ashore. Today, we will be taking you ashore using the ship's continuous water shuttle service. All guests making use of the water shuttle service today will be required to wear a mask during the service. For your own safety, please read the tender safety notice at the head of the gangway and familiarize yourself with the contents of the emergency instructions notice posted in the cab of each shuttle. You are reminded that there must be no smoking whites in the shuttle and to avoid risk of injury, you must keep your hands and arms off the side of the water shuttle as it comes alongside the ship. Good morning from Santa Barbara. This is our water tender, water shuttle port. I do have an excursion this morning. I need to go down to Princess Theater at eight o'clock. So I have a little time to grab some coffee. It is a full day excursion, which will include lunch and wine tasting. I'm very, very excited. All right, <laughs> I made it to the Princess Theater. I am all the way in the front. I'm in group one, I'm the first one here. For that group, there seems to be like three or four groups going um, different excursions. So I'm really excited. The one that I'm going on is called Cal Riviera Food and Wine. So we'll see how it goes. I'm so excited. All right, we just got on the water shuttle. It's uh, one of those covered ones uh, from the ship. There's one out there. So here we go. Good. If you like cupcakes, that's good. If you like both, you're 
doubly blessed. So um, we'll get up over there about 11 o'clock, uh, and in doing so, we'll go up over those uh, tall mountains there. Those mountains in the sea are really the prime, the, the biggest features of Santa Barbara, or the most important features of Santa Barbara. The mountains started about 17 to 20 years ago when the uh, Earth's surface was still forming and the Pacific Plate nudged against the North American Plate and pushed up those mountains, pushed up those islands too that you saw out there. Uh, those, that's a range of mountains, it goes about 180 miles, uh, but now they have water up to their neck, so, they, uh, so they're considered um, islands. Uh, those mountains also go all the way down to the sea on both sides of us. They're two to 4,000 feet high. So during the early days of Santa Barbara, it was tough to get around, the, around them, it was tough to get over them. So we really were isolated, and the only way to come was by sea. And the sea is not terribly hospitable. It looks nice today, um, but uh, when there's a southern wind, it, it blows ships onto the shore. And you may have noticed we have some anchorage uh, out there. Some small boats are anchored off the pier. And uh, every uh, winter, we get one or two of those who uh, get blown ashore. So it wasn't uh, to a couple hundred years later that they, as they established their presence here. And this is what they established. We're going through right now. This is the Presidio. It was a whole square block. Now you only see the north wall and segments of the uh, east and west. But in the, if we were here in 1786, we'd be right in the middle of this big fort. Um, so they put that in because they, they, the uh, British and the, uh, and the um, Russian traders were starting to encroach on California, and Spain didn't want to weaken their claim to this territory. So they put in four forts, they called them presidios, to defend the uh, claim. They put the first one in San Diego, because they were coming up from Baja, California, from Mexico. So San Diego was the first one. Then they went to jump, uh, jumped up to Monterey, which has a, a slight bay, and uh, they put the second one there, and that became the headquarters of Alta, Alta California, Upper California. Then the third one up in San Francisco, and they realized the distance between Monterey and San Diego was too much to defend. So they put the fourth one here, calling it the Royal Presidio of Santa Barbara, giving us our name and uh, founding our town. So that Presidio was the first thing built in, in Santa Barbara. We're gonna go now to one of the other highlights, the uh, architectural highlights of Santa Barbara, the Santa Barbara County Courthouse.
where they took away all the missions and all the land. We had a couple of guys who attended church here and like and was close and were close to the Franciscans. So they bought the mission property and gave them back the um, the mission. And they continued instead of running a, a mission service, they ran a parish service.
We are at Santa Barbara Public Market. What a wonderful day we had in Santa Barbara. <laughs> this is the view up my windows. In the morning, I can't see anything because they're foggy. So I have to wait for the afternoon and the sun to come out and burn that off. But look at all the sailboats out there. I guess this is the time they go sailing. There's lots of them out there. A lot of them. There's those that stand up on the board. Let's see if I can zoom in. You can see them out there. They look like little tiny dots. <laughs> but we're back from our excursion. It was really, really great. Uh, we got to see so many places. We got to learn so much about the area. Uh, our tour guide was fantastic. He's a local of San, Santa Barbara, and he was awesome. He was awesome. We had a great motor coach driver. We stopped plenty of times for us to go to the bathroom, and we had a lunch right before we left, late lunch of tacos, which are really good. Got to go to a wine shop a local f wine family um, that was really fun we got to go through the mountains and over the mountains it's just just a beautiful beautiful area i really enjoyed it i am tired i might take a nap <laughs> anyway that is all I'm at the International Cafe. I came to get coffee, but look at this. I'm gonna be naughty. I'm gonna be naughty. I think I'm gonna get one of those meringues. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you. They change um, the desserts quite often. Um, so yeah, this is what they have right now. They all look delicious, but that's safe for me. And then they have some, some like savory stuff too, and sandwiches. Here's where the coffee magic happens. So I just place my order here, and I'm gonna walk over there and wait for it. Look at these celebration cakes. How pretty. Oh, and I got my meringue. Heart. 
Curacao, a magical island with 300 days a year of sunshine, miles of beautiful beaches, and a diverse cross-section of cultures that includes Afro-Caribbean, Dutch, French, and Latin influences. This island getaway is 40 miles north of Venezuela and is completely surrounded by the warm, crystal waters of the South Caribbean Sea. Alright, so right now it's time to make our Asun Black Cup. So first we're going to be introducing some pine apples to give some tropical feel or tropical taste into our cocktail. And by the way, we're going to be making two. This one is for Mwanda and for Aidan. Alright. And then we're going to be adding some um, agave nectar to give some nice body into our cocktail. There you go. And now let me introduce you to a local liquor, and this one is Blue Curacao. So this one is made out of the Raja oranges, and this Raja oranges is very native to Curacao. But the flavor profile of this Blue Curacao is bitter orange, right? And now we're going to be adding half an ounce of our Blue Curacao. So to enhance the flavor of our Azul Mango, we're going to be adding some Touch run silver, and we're gonna be pouring two shots because we're gonna be making two of our cups. There you go. But before we're gonna be shaking our cocktail, let me get our glass and my special device we normally use here in the spirit, and this one is an ice eye container. So inside the ice eye container, we infuse aquafaba. St. Germain and some lemon juice and we put some CO2 inside so this one is a little bit more advanced mixology because this one we're turning liquid into foam all right there you go so this foam is called an edible flower foam so right now see me already give me the shaker and time to shake our cocktail Ocean Terrace Seafood Bar because I love their sushi. So good. I just had a few uh, pre-dinner cocktails at Good Spirits. It's always a fun place. And I'm gonna have some sushi and I'll probably go back to go back to Good Spirits. Maybe I'll go to the casino. Who knows? The night is young. And then having pretty much the same thing I had the other night. Because um, it's easy, it's gluten free, and instead of soy sauce, I have the spicy mayo, which I love, and my fresh ginger. I am a happy girl. And I also ordered a Tokyo tea, which I had the other night as well. So, yay! I'm excited. Tokyo tea just arrived. 